Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to do some breast cancer awareness hats. Um, I've got quite a few here. Each hat is a little different, but I'll go over what I've done for each hat throughout this video. This first hat was done on the 3 force gauge 20 peg um, preemie hat loom or sock slipper loom from Cindy Wood. Now this one can be bought by itself or can be bought in the four piece adult set, which this is what it looks like. They're actually getting ready to do, ignore the way I've got the pegs on here. Um, they actually has nothing to do with the pattern. These are just the looms I used. They are going to be offering pink pegs starting in October and a certain amount of the proceeds will go to breast cancer research, I believe, but you'll find out more about that on the website. So this is a preemie size hat. Next one we got like a newborn size. And this one's actually done, this one's just e-wrap. This one is done with a garter stitch as you can see. It actually helps that transition at the top seem to go a lot smoother. And I did a little bit of embellishment down here that if you look at it kind of looks like the little ribbons. This hat was done on the 5 8 gauge um, 29 peg newborn hat loom. And this can be in the lot, you can get this one by itself or in the large four piece set. So there's that hat. This next one got the collar changed to the top, and I did the ribbon. A different color and the body's all e-wrap that way which I did it two different ways the one side I like this style a lot better because when this one's on you can tell the ribbons a lot easier than any of the other ones and that hat was done on the 5 8 41 peg youth hat loom and it could be in the large hat loom set as well And finally, we got this one. So you can see the ribbons in it. And that one was done on the 5 8 inch uh, 48 peg adult hat loom. And this you can get in the adult four piece set. So there's that one. Get those out of the way. Okay, so to get started, I'm actually going to be making this hat on the child hat loom, the 30 peg child hat loom. Um, this one I'm going to be doing, I'm trying to use different colors, so I'm going to be doing dark brown, um, the top part will be black, and I am going to do the ribbons and the pink. So to start out, we will be using a chain cast on. There we go. To do a chain cast on, you do a slip knot. If I go over this too fast, I do have separate videos that can show you how to do it. So we got a slip knot. You just start around your first peg, pull the knot tight. We well, don't want to pull it too tight, but you pull the knot, put the loop behind the next peg, pull the yarn through loop behind the next peg pull the yarn through you do this all the all way right, around once you got your chain cast on done that last loop you put on that first peg so that whole circle is connected um, I'm going to go over a few things real quick so that you will know which style you want to make if you just want to make the regular you know boob hat you just get the loom size that you would like and you just this one was just e-wrap so it'll want to curl a little bit I did it with homespun two strands to make it a little thicker and but if you just do it with a regular like four ply yarn which is what this is um, double strand and it might want to curl it'll curl more than this so if you want it just like this you e-wrap 
the entire hat and then your last this one's a newborn so the last two rows I did of what you would use for the nipple collar any other size you do the last three rows and that would get you your body and then at the end of the video I'll show you how I did the nipple itself now you can garter stitch the body as well if you wanted to which would be the same concept as this you just e-wrap a row purl a row all the way to the finish your last three rows would be e-wrap purl e-wrap then you cast off and do the nipple if you want to do something more like this with the ribbon that's what i want to show you i'll show you how to do the ribbon in a minute but we need a bit of a brim here before we do the ribbon. So what I will do is our first row, we're going to do four rows here. We will e-wrap a row, purl a row, e-wrap a row, and then our last row will be purled. So if you do not know how to do the purl stitch, um, I will go over that in just a moment. Okay, we got our four rows, but I still got a few purl stitches here to do just to kind of show you how to do them. All right, now to do your purl stitch, you're going to put the hook down through the top of the loop on the peg. Your working yarn is going to go underneath and you're going to pull it up through. So you just created a new loop here. You're going to take what's on the loop off, on the peg off with that new loop on and tighten it. A couple more times to show you. That's how you do the purl stitch. Okay, so when your first four rows are done, you got your cast on and you e wrap a row, purl a row, e wrap a row, purl a row. Take and cut the working yarn. And I like to kind of twist and anchor it on like the next couple pegs just to hold it in place. You can go ahead and push all this down. Now we're going to do our ribbon. And you can pick whatever um, color you want to use. I'm using a a lighter pink and I'm just doing one strand of a worsted weight yarn in number four because we don't want it too thick you can see this is the color I did in this one all right and now when you're picking out your loom to use the larger the gauge the loom is the more defined these ribbons are going to be because they'll be pulled apart a little farther so that might help you in deciding what loom to go with now this loom hey to do the ribbon it really doesn't matter where you start on the loom I'm just going where my anchor peg is I'm just kind of wrapping the yarn around it oops hold on. there we go wrapping the yarn around it now, what we need to do is we are creating these ribbons, which to do so, we have to chain four, I mean not chain four, sorry, chain 15 on every peg. And what I mean is we are at our first peg, we wrap around, pull the bottom yarn over the top, there's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see as you do, it's going to want to like flip over. Just keep pushing it down. Ten. 
12, 13, 14, and 15. So this is what you got. You can see it right there. Now, the way you chain them doesn't want to look too even. So I take and I kind of stretch it a bit. And then you actually take the loop and hook it to the previous peg and pull it tight. You're going to e-wrap the empty peg and e-wrap the next peg. Bottom over the top. Now this one's a little different because you got the anchor hooked right here. But we want this right here to be up here so that it's a little more even. So to do so, I actually take that pink strand, it'll be a little more even on the other ones, and put on the peg. I'll work through another one with you um, so that you can get the idea. So we've got our first right there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Take it off. You want to kind of stretch it out. I'll even all the stitches. Put it on the one before. And tighten that up. You don't want to do it too tight. Um, but you want it on there good. You wrap the next two. Take the bottom over the top. Now you'll be able to see. Okay. See that long strand coming from this peg to this. You pick that up. And put it on that peg. You're going to stretch it over. And put it on that peg. Now see this peg has one, two, three loops on it. I'm going to take that bottom loop over the top two, and that just leaves the two loops on it, and that kind of helps to hold, hold these shapes up a little higher. This one will still be down a little lower, but that helps. You're going to do this all the way around the loom. Alright, as you can see, I've done almost all the way around I'm back to this last one, so you want to e-wrap the two. Now this one has that first loop, because this was your first peg and you took it back, so that's what that loop is from. So you pull both of those over that top. Now you do have two options. I've actually done half the loom one way and I'm doing half of it another way just so you can see exactly how it turns out. You see the pink string. You can either pull that over or I'll show you with this one. You can take the brown loop over top of it and pull it up if you'd rather do that. Which, like I said, I'll show you when it's done the difference so that you'll know which way you want to do it. So we got one already on here. So we're going to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Take it off. See how it's kind of jacked up looking, but if you stretch it out, it'll even those stitches. And of course, you do the same. You put it on that previous peg. You don't want this peg to be empty. 
So we're wrapping it. We're going to wrap this first one. And again, you can bring up either one. I'll show you the brown again. You can either grab this pink string here and pull it over like that. Or you can do the brown. Well, I've already got the pink. I'll just do the pink one. And I'll go back to this previous peg, which has three loops on it. Take the bottom over the top. And there you go. Now, kind of undo that because you don't want to take that off there. Wrap the working yarn um, about three times around the loom. Because now we've got this part done, but to get these to look like these, we actually have to cast this whole thing off. And to do that, okay, untwist that yarn. All right, this was my cast on string. I'm actually going to take and pull it down so it's not confusing. I'm actually going to do a super stretchy cast off. So we're going to start from where the yarn is. We're going to skip a peg. Pull the yarn up through the bottom. Go back one peg and pull it down. Skip a peg, pull the yarn up through the bottom, go over one and down. Skip a peg, pull the yarn up through the bottom, go back one and pull it down. You'll do this all the way around back to your first peg right, when you are about back to your beginning let me see i still got a couple left you're still doing the same thing all the way around see here was your first peg that you did we're going to go ahead and do that peg again just so it's even and everything's locked in i'll go ahead and pull this up through that last peg and there you go, I'll show you. If you just pull up those pink ones, this is what it's going to look like. If you pull up the brown knots, which I suspect pulling up the brown ones will actually make this a little more symmetrical. But we'll see exactly how it looks when I get all this off here. Now all that's locked in, it's not going anywhere. You take everything off the loom. So just like I'm doing, go around the entire loom and take the whole thing off. When you've got it off the loom, this is what you got. And it doesn't really look like much at this point, but this is your brim. And these are going to be your little breast cancer ribbons. Now, right now you have two choices that you can make. There are two different ways to reattach this and it gives you two different looks. If you reattach it this way right here with your cast off edge showing, you will have that in your finished project. Which it's actually, I, it's kind of neat. It gives it more of a texture and a different stitch look. If you want, you can take and attach it like this, which will give you more of this look to where all you see really are the ribbons. Um, I've done a couple of them where I attached like that with them inside out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it like this instead for this one. So to attach it, we want this cast off edge, which where I did that, some of it's going to look a little different. We want it to where this cast off edge is like that. So this is facing out. We've got all these strings hanging off of it at this point. You're going to ignore every single one of them. And you don't have to attach it back 
at your starting peg with the cast off yarn right there it doesn't really matter but what you want to do is if we just put the loops on the pegs like this there won't be a ribbon shape let me zoom in on this we want there to be a ribbon shape so what you do you are going to twist them and put them on the loom twist all of them in the same direction all the way around until you get back until every single one of them is on the loom once that is done it's all on there this is what you got now I'm trying to show you examples of each step so you can see exactly what your choices are and that way you will know what you're going to do what I'm going to do I'm going to purl one row with one strand of the same color yarn as the ribbon the reason I do that is that one strand if I did it the back to the brown this is what that one strand is which on this one as you can see it's like it's holding the bows together but if I do it that same collar you don't see it and all you see are the bows so there are your options you can do one strand of the original collar or of the bow collar and I'm doing the bow collar so we're going to find where our cast on spot was I'm just hooking it there I've got this hook down in there really tight okay so we're just going to start with that first peg and we're going to purl take the bow off and put the loop on and do this all the way around till you get back to your first peg all right i've got one more peg to do now what i like to do is i'm going to take that tail from that first peg and i'm going to take the new my starting tail and what i'm working on and i'm going to hold both of those together as one that just helps to lock this in and then you cut We'll worry about weaving all these in later, but I'll take my hook and pull them down. And from the inside, I've got a few different things going on here. Yours will be a little more symmetrical, but I'm trying something out on this side and a different thing on that side just so you can see the difference. But I actually kind of like, we'll see how it turns out, but I think I'm going to like this way better. So that's your inside. You can kind of see your bows. Now we're going to go back to our original collar, two strands, put all these extra strings down in there. There we go. And hook that. We're going to e-wrap the entire row. Once we get done with this e-wrap, I'm going to tell you, you have yet another choice. <laughs> I know, I've got a bunch of different hats over here, so there's different things you can do, but hopefully I'm making this to where everybody can follow this okay and understand exactly uh, what to do to get the desired look that you want. Again, I'm going to take this tail. I'm going to wrap it. I like doing that because that connects that first round and then you just take the bottom loops over the top loops all the way around the entire loom Okay, honey. That was my youngest, Kiana. She's four and loves Shopkins. Okay. So there we go. We got our 
other our original color back on. You can e-wrap the rest of the body of the hat if you want and your it'll be more like this your bows will be standing out how they are on this one or you can garter stitch the rest of your hat and they will be kind of indented in the fabric um, now there is a difference in the appearance of the nipple part at the top with the garter stitch it seems to have more rounded and I think it forms better at the top. So I'm going to do a garter stitch and all that is we e-wrap a row, purl a row, e-wrap a row, purl a row all the way around. And you're going to do this until you get this as long as you want. Uh, I'm not going to give you an exact row number just because everybody knits differently. What I do is I use my hand. So once it is about as long as my hand is then I start doing my cast off. Um, but of course, I will go into a little more detail about that in a moment because we're going to get this. We don't want to get it, you want to get it about as long as you want. Your last three, two or three rows. I'm going to do three rows. You will switch to whatever color you want to use for the nipple, which uh, I got black here to do, but this brown is so dark. I don't know. I might. I don't know if I should do the black or if I should use this collar. I guess it doesn't really matter either way because this one, I just didn't have the right yarn collars that I really wanted to do it because I wanted to do this out of a, a yarn about as dark as this with a about this collar probably for the nipple, but I didn't have that collar, so I just used this one. So we'll see what I pick when I get to that point. But at this point, if you're doing your garter stitch, do your garter stitch as long as you want, and then do three rows in the same stitch. If you do garter stitch, this one was E-wrap, purl, and then E-wrap for the last three rows. If you want to E-wrap the whole thing, E-wrap it. And again, same thing, E-wrap your last three rows. Once the hat, is as long as you need it to be. Let me zoom this out some. Once you have it, which I've got it, it's down to about the end of my hand. Then you do three rows of whatever the color you want to use for the nipple part is. I kept going back and forth between the black and the pink kind of wishing I would have went with the black now I think um, but I was worried it wouldn't show since the only brown I had was a little darker than I wanted to use okay once all that is done you take your working yarn and just wrap it around the loom like three times and then you cut you can do whatever preferred cast off you want at this point. You can do just a regular pull string cast off. You can do pull string variant. I would choose one of those two. I'm going to do a bit of a variant. I'm going to pull through one peg and I'm going to pull through a second peg. Then I'm going to skip two pegs. Pull through two, and then skip two. You, you do this to your first peg. You're going to keep continuing the same thing. See these two you already went through. So you'll skip those two, do these two, skip those two, do these two. All the way around then you'll take everything off the Once way. everything is off the loom, this is what you got. Now I didn't, a lot of times I will take one of the strands out, but I didn't for this one. So what you're going to do is, if you did the same cast off that I just did, your string is actually running around two times. You can see that bottom one and the top one from doing it that way. So 
you need to kind of loosen it and tighten it as you go around to get all of that tightened up. Um, I almost got it done. I'm not going to completely cinch it up yet because we still need to make the nipple, which what I'm doing is actually just pull, cutting part of the pull string to do that with. Now I wanted to point out a couple things. Now for your ribbons, if you pulled the pink string up instead of the brown when you're doing the ribbons, where I showed you earlier, this is how it turns out. If you did the brown, that is how it turned out. I don't know, I kind of like, we'll see what it looks like when it's completely done and on a head, but I think I kind of like the brown. It gives a little, makes this look more like a border around it. I think it kind of, there you got the ribbons that side. Here you got the ribbons on this side. Okay. So let's make the nipple part. I'm just taking the strings. I'm just going to fold them in half, which there was two, so this is two strands here, two strands here. I'm just going to grab the loom, take that loop, put it on there. We're just doing a small I cord. And to do that, you wrap that peg. We're doing like a figure eight type wrap. Let me do that again so you can see it from this angle. Put the loop on there. You wrap, you wrap, you wrap like a figure eight until there's two sets on each peg. Then you're going to take the bottom set over that front set. Now we don't want this to be real big so we just need to do just a few here. Sorry, the, there we go. The grip was getting loose on my hook. Okay, so we'll do another set. And we'll do like two more sets. So there's set and we'll do, because these form pretty fast and you don't need a real long one. And if you make it too long, then you have this big knob that hangs on the inside of the loom. So see, that's plenty big enough. We just need a little bit to hang off the end. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the loop from one of the pegs, doesn't really matter. There we go, and pull that over. Take the whole thing off. You can either use a crochet hook for this part or just pull it through with your fingers. That will knot it. Then you can just cut that off at the knot because we don't need that anymore. What you will want is to take a tapestry needle and thread through the yarn that is still on the pull string and just push it through so you just need a little bit hanging on the end. And there we go. And see, now we've got all the big bubbles on the top are pulled smooth. So we can actually put all of this through the middle. Get all of it. There we go. And you want to pull Okay, make sure you get the nipple part back up through. There we go. So you want that like that. At this point you can turn it inside out. You can see the other end is hanging through here and start to tighten it. Before you get it too super tight, just make sure you've got however much you want hanging out, hanging out, because it will tighten up to where it's hard to even move it at all. And this one, it can be kind of hard to get it to completely tighten all the way around. There we go. 
I think that's tightened. Yes. This point. Here's some extra strands. I'm just gonna tie them together and tie it off and cut them just so we don't have them hanging all over the place. Oh, I don't have my crochet hook over here. Typically I just use a crochet hook to weave these ends in, but my crochet hook is on the other table. So I'm just gonna pull this back through. The eye of the tapestry needle and okay I'll just pull it over on this side just pull it through and put it through the loop do that again up close so you can see okay so I'm pulled the tapestry needle through a stitch that was close to this right here and then I'm just pulling it through I'm going to tighten that up. It creates a little knot. And I could take it off. Now you can stretch it out. Sometimes the top part, you'll stretch it a bit to kind of get it to keep the right shape. So there we go. There's the top part. And here's the rest of it. Now I do want to point out something when I made this hat I was drowning myself in some episodes of house that's on Netflix now so I accidentally did two rows of e-wrap together and if you do that you'll end up with a flatter spot in it like I did right there so that's what that's from and that's where I showed you just the one stitch with the brown but you have the option if you like the pattern like this there are so many options you can do when making these hats. It really depends on what you like best. Um, I do suggest if you're doing the ribbons in it to do the ribbon in a different color just because it's kind of hard to tell when it's just in the pink in the same color. So here's one way you can do it. And of course what I used for this one. This one is a larger gauge than the other one. So you'll notice the ribbons seem to stand out by themselves a little better. And you can do it where you do your chain 15. Move it to the peg before it. And then pick up, you know, you wrap two pegs after it. And then pick up the pink string and put on it. That's how it turns out this way. If you pick up that brown stitch, it'll turn out that way. All right, everybody, that's all I've got for this. There was a lot of information in this video and a lot of different ways you can make these hats. So I really do hope I didn't uh, make it too confusing and I hope that it was very easy to understand. So any comments or questions, just please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.